I am so happy to be back in my shop and creating once again. This is a magnet redo that we will be performing or I will be sharing in this particular video. If you want to know where I've been for the past six weeks, hit that subscribe and notification bell and you'll be notified when I upload my new vlog format where I am going to start communicating with you face to face. My name is Peggy. Let me briefly introduce my channel. When I was watching my grandchildren, they live on a military base, and we were the recipient of all of these magnets that have the ways to parent a military child, and they just threw them in these bags. We were at a little trade show event. They threw them in my granddaughter's bags. I think we wound up with about a dozen of them. So we put one on their refrigerator, and I brought the rest of them home. I'm coating them with the three coats of gesso to make it more um, receptive to what I'm about to do. Now that I have that coated and dried, I'm going to stick this piece of painter's tape down the one side and cover the right half of this magnet. I don't want to do anything with that right now. Now I have a raw umber and just a Liquitec Basics basic acrylic ink, acrylic paint, I'm sorry, that I'm going to utilize to coat the left side of this. Now I am putting it on drying in between coats and it is taking about two, well, three coats to get it complete coverage. So we'll put that last coat on, allow that to dry, and then we'll pull that painter's tape um, a little bit later. So now that that is dry, I'm reapplying some painter's tape to keep that covered. I'm going to work on the far right side of this magnet. I've decided that I would like to use texture paste here. I make my own texture paste. It's just a mixture of baby powder, glue, and white acrylic paint. I have a recipe for that, but I'm at a point where I kind of eye it. And this particular mixture is has done really well. I didn't get it so dry that it dried out fast, and I didn't get it so wet that it was not um, workable, if you will. So I've put that down, taken just a comb that I purchased cheaply in a pack of, I don't know, 10 plastic combs for a buck at the dollar store. And I combed through that texture paste to give it these nice little ridges on the right side. So I have the texture that I want. I allowed that to dry. There's drying time on this project, of course. And the texture paste I find is better if you allow it to dry naturally than try to speed that up with a blow dryer or a heat gun. So now that I have everything dry, I'm going to pull up that uh, tape and just mend any little, little uh, glitches I have. And now I want to add just a little bit more to that um, raw umber. So I'm going to tape off the other side of the magnet to, I'm sorry, not to the raw umber, to the texture paste. I'm going to tape off the other side of the magnet and cover, cover that uh, raw umber with this piece of paper just to protect it while I work on this texture paste side. For this, I've chosen to use Distress Oxide inks. I'm utilizing Vintage Photo and Ground Espresso. So first, I'll spray the Vintage Photo, let that drip, get it on there. 
let it dry, and I'm going to allow it to dry pretty much before I put on the ground espresso. I do want some blending there, but I don't want a lot. So now that that is in place, let's go back with the ground espresso. So there's not a tremendous amount of difference, but there is a definitive blending or a definitive difference between the two colors. I'm going to go back with a little more vintage photo. And allow that to dry. So now that we have that side dry, I'm going to remove the paper and remove this center piece of painter's tape. And see where we are. So we have that clear white line, which of course I don't want to leave that white. I don't want to leave that just gesso. So I shall cover up and make sure that we have nice straight lines, cover up some of where that, that uh, distress oxide bled underneath the tape. And I'm going to use a gold to paint this. And this is just a craft paint, a craft gold. The name of it is pure gold. And paint that in to that stripe area. And this is going to take several coats as well. So I'm going to allow that to dry between coats, stick another coat on. I'm drying it with my hair dryer trying not to put any heat to this magnet because I do not want, or a lot of heat, I'm um, drying it with the cool setting on the hair dryer because I don't want this magnet to warp with the heat. So now let's see how we did. That side looks pretty good. There is a little white space down there that I thought I could correct with my gold paint marker, but alas, it did not work, so I shall try my best to straight line this down, down that edge. And there we go. I want the wash of gold or the dry brush of gold over the top of that black umber. So I put some on. I felt like it might be a little too much. Um, I was a little uh, tardy in reacting to that. So I'm spraying it with some water to try to reactivate it. And I just grabbed a piece of uh, newspaper print to see if I could pick up some of that paint. And I'm just going to go ahead and put more on, hit that water and pick up what I can. And I'm okay with this. I think this, I think this is going to look fine. It's, you know, kind of a mistake that we're going to turn into part of a design. How's that sound? <laughs> so I just am going over that gold once more to make sure that's good and clear. And there, I think we're getting a pretty, pretty decent little start. So there's nothing, um, nothing more gratifying than have, having something come together after you've made a mistake. And now I shall take my fan brush and just splatter some gold across that textured area or the textured paste area as well. And this is going to be a background for that feather that you saw in the original, in the original um, picture. So let's finish up the background and then we'll plop that feather out and I'll show you how I adhered that. I have this stamp that I pulled apart. This was a wood stamp and I pulled the rubber off of the stamp so I had more um, control over where 
I wanted that to stamp. And it is just a script. And I'm putting that just down that gold section. And here are the feathers that I purchased. They're all kind of strung together on this tape. So I kept the tape in place because I thought that would be perfect for gluing that feather onto this magnet. So let me just glue it down with a little bit of glitter glue. We'll get it into position and now we have to hide the tape. So there's nothing better than to hide that tape than some sealing wax. So I'm pulling out my sealing wax and my heat, my seal, and we will melt that wax right onto the top of that tape, being very cautious not to get that flame close to that feather. And I always keep a container of water on my table so when I'm using fire like this, I can stick this down inside that water and extinguish it so I don't have all that smoke. And there's my seal right in the middle of that. And that completes the magnet. I'll just clean the edge. I'm going to go around the whole outside edge of this. I'm going to ink it with black to kind of frame everything in. And there you have it. So here is that finished magnet. You have a close-up view of that wax seal with the feather. A full picture once again. And I painted my file cabinets that uh, burn red. And here it is on that file cabinet. So thank you for being here. I'm so happy to be back. I hope you're happy to have me back. And once again, I have lots planned coming up. I'm going to be redoing all of these magnets. I have some paperclip videos that I have ready to upload. Of course, I'm going to start the vlog. I'm starting some journals. There's just going to be a lot going on now that I'm in my new space and happy to be here. So I shall say bye for now.